free wood chunks. That's how you do that. Somebody say it reminds me of the Lone Ranger. No. So it's just like I was telling my nephews. You're going to have a thousand people do what you want to do. And a thousand other people offering the same service. So how I decided to set myself apart this summer, especially when it comes to firewood and cooking wood, is free pounds of wood chunks. And that keeps people happy and it keeps people coming back. Helpful tip 101. Yeah, buddy. So that's just a little helpful tip. Because cause that's the title of the video. <laughs> oh, Jessica, she in here talking shit about dreads. So I said, BG, where do you? <laughs> what do I see myself at 60 years old? I have no idea. I may not be alive. But yeah, that's how I figured I set, set myself apart doing what I do. Especially with this wood thing because you got a million other people that's doing the same thing. So it's like I was telling my nephews, you got to think about what service you want to provide the world. And then think about all the other people offering the same service. And then figure out ways how you can set yourself apart. Because a lot of people, they just want to go for the cheapest thing out there going. And when a lot of people do that, they'll go from they'll go to and from different um, people offering the same service like lawn care and and plumbing and HVAC and everything else. So, I mean, if you own a company, and you own a small business, you got to figure out a way to set yourself apart. So that's why per, me personally doing what I do and there's a lot of people that watch me that do this that are into the same things that i do i just go out on a limb and be like with the cord of every i mean with the purchase of every cord of wood you buy you get a free five pound box of cherry wood chunks see it's that simple and that's not hurting me none so and i already started so this is all the cherry i have it's all the cherry wood on its own little pallet and I'm going to start my red and white oak um, slabs over there and wrap that around the azalea bush because they all, they're done blooming and looking pretty. So I'm going to just cover those with wood. And then I done expanded that upward. And I got Gypsy Vanner out here. So now pretty much the easiest way, the most efficient way to unload my trailer with the wood is to reverse the gator onto the trailer take the wood throw it in the back of the gator drive off of it and back up to the log splitter that way none of the wood touches the ground so i go directly from the gator bed onto the log splitter then when i'm done splitting it i toss it in here and then from here when this gets full Gypsy Vanner, the trusty steed, drives it on around yonder to where I'll be stacking it, which is up there. So it's like, so it's like a little process I got going on. I feel like it's more efficient than what I used to do. That way you won't see no, no um, rounds just randomly sitting here in the, um, cause that shit was an eyesore. Like I like to be tidy because this pretty much is the display and people like that like we had an event over here oh i talked to the mayor too i talked to the mayor of the town i'm in and told that nigga to start buying my my products but yeah they they threw a little something back here in this park and um one of the, one of the guys that owns the uh a catering service he came back here with his uh 
with his tow behind grill and and his wife and they came back here did the fuck out one and i went over there i asked him what wood he used he said he already got some bundles but i went over there and gave him some some cherry wood and i made sure i cut the bark off of it too like that's no problem like, i took all the bark off a lot of people don't care but i took the bark off just to leave an impression so you come deal with me and i'm local so there's no reason why you can't support local the local businesses so but i tasted his barbecue and it i mean you know he's like a three-time championship barbecue some shit or whatever I, it was a title you know when people tell me they titles i just but he got titles and he's accredited and i tasted his i tasted his brisket and i was like i mean it was good but damn i can do better i just don't have all the titles attached to my name but i can do better but um i was thinking about doing something like that setting up a little pop-up stand or something over there off the highway and the mayor even got one going on i talked to the mayor i was like damn you overpaying on wood like you paint like you i'm not trying to fuck up the next man hustle but you paying too much for wood homie you can you can come up the street and get some shit from me <clears throat> but um and i got locally sourced wood like people like when you say local people like local shit like as soon as you say it's local they like hmm do tell you know and then you say locally sourced and then like hmm you put that source on it it takes it to a, another dimension and then then when you say harvest like these are the type of words people like to hear be like oh i harvested myself it's locally sourced organic you know these are buzzwords that gets people attention <laughs> Like I got some maple sitting right there. Like, I can't say that about pecan because pecan uh, trees aren't indigenous to Virginia. As a matter of fact, I think, um, who was it? Who owned Monticello? Uh, what was it? Thomas Jefferson? Like, he brought some from, like, Louisiana and, and planted them over there in the Tidewater area or some shit. But that shit doesn't come from here. Like, you'll never just see random pecan wood a pecan tree in Virginia unless somebody like actually planted that there so everything I get that I have it was that shit was sourced locally like it's what grows here so you can support here not that mesquite wood we don't have that here no but uh yeah so I popped with the mayor on some stuff um and Brad just out here willing to dealing like that's that's how you um I don't know that's how you make a name for yourself. You can't you can't just stay stuck in the in the on the internet and and hoot and holler and think you're gonna get shit accomplished. You gotta go outside and meet people and, and will and deal and, and be willing to put yourself out there. Either to be scrutinized or to be praised for the for the services you offer and uh the for the type for the level of which you do it. And if you have somebody that, that does it better, that, that's who you learn from. Like I, got, I had somebody that, that stopped me, he seen me with my truck, and I had the gator on the trailer. He thought it was a Z mower. He thought it was a zero turn. I was like, no, nah, this, the, this the gator. And he was like, well, I know I used to work for a company that, um, I used to work for a company, but I got fired, but I, I do landscaping, I do, all this that and the other stuff and i was thinking about i was like i don't need you right now but you know i gave him my business card and said if you still know those same contacts i got lawnmowers like i got some i got several lawnmowers on this property i was like we can um we can get together and do something if you find the business then we could pop like that and we can go have you just use my equipment because he doesn't have nothing but you'll be valuable if you have the contacts and and you have the clients then we could do that because right now i'm not focused in that area of of lawn care but i'll do it i'm just that's just not there's just other things that keep coming up that prevent me from doing it even though that's what i set out to do and said i would do this summer when it was winter i said i'd be in the lawn care well i'm not because 
everything else is is you know is taking place at a much faster rate and i went and picked up a whole bunch of maple i went and picked up a whole bunch of maple yesterday that shit was smelling it had the whole back smelling good as soon as you hit this corner you get hit with cherry wood as soon as you hit this corner you get hit with the pile of cherry and that last stack on the end right there that's straight maple and of course i got cedar somebody said and you want to give the dude steady work see that's the thing like this that's the thing about small people like in, extremely independent people like me like i can't promise you steady work that's one thing that's not like when i was saying like when i was talking about job stability and i was talking about how people they love waking up in the morning and going to work even though they bitch about it you may have people that they sit up there and say oh my job doesn't pay me enough my job this my job that my hours alone i'm like you got work though this, this is why i'm not in that i'm a boss mentality that's why i don't have that i'm a boss mentality and be your own boss i don't believe in a, i don't believe in bosses at all like that shit in and of itself is an illusion i'll explain why because uh, most of the people who complain about having a boss and fantasize about being their own boss they are in love with the stability that their job offers typically when you quit doing that and you and you start working and you start working to provide a service for other people directly i can't say work for yourself because you you can never really work for yourself all you could do is just leave what you're doing the third party shit and directly interact with customers yourself and offer services and anything you do at which point your manager and supervisor is no longer your boss but it is directly the customers who become your boss because they put the demand on you they put the standard on you and they tell you what they want and you have to comply if you want to stay in business so when i was thinking about like um job security and the stability that jobs offer like, i can see why a lot of people that like don't want to leave their jobs especially when their jobs ask them to do shit that they they don't believe in because the alternative does seem scary and it's like right now i'm not in a position to offer somebody a steady job and that's what people want like you come work you can fantasize about doing the things i do but if they but when it comes down to it if well for one if i don't work i don't eat for two i gotta put myself out there to find the work so when you think about people with jobs complaining about them jobs all they have to do is show the fuck up like the supervisor the the ceo the the company has already done the groundwork found the customers they're coming in the door all you have to do is is, is just show up like if you work for like some of these hvac companies all you have to do is, is show up to work they provide you a work van you got your tools in there and you go out to people's homes but they find the customers you don't find the customers like you don't know the first thing about advertising yourself or putting yourself out there in, in a manner for which people can look at the services you provide and be like yo i want to go that route i, I want to mess with him so you gotta you i mean it, it's humbling but a lot of people will prefer to have somebody do that type of work for them you got hard working people out here but they don't know how to find customers they don't know how to interact with people they rather just take their skill set and go work for somebody else because that somebody else has already done the groundwork and laid the foundation for which all they have to do is just show up and they immediately got people coming in the door and no matter how bad your company may be doing that you work for you're going to get paid the same that's how most of like, like a lot of hourly employees they're just going to get paid the same like your company could be down bad they still got to pay you the fucking same they're still you still gonna make 18 dollars an hour 15 dollars an hour like they could have took uh uh they could have took a nosedive when it come to profits you still gonna get that amount of money with me and people like me it's nah if i'm down bad you're gonna directly feel it matter of fact lay behind matter of fact clock out ain't no clock in matter of fact don't come to work yo work ain't no work you know and, and 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 people can't rock like that so every day 
every day is a challenge to get out there and make sure you you put yourself to it and, and get shit cracking somebody say you don't get paid more when they make more and, and, and you don't get paid less oftentimes you don't get paid less when they make less and then you gotta you gotta specifically say who they are the company it's not just your supervisor it's some i'm talking about 95 percent of the people's jobs out here especially government employees That's all I'm talking. They they gonna get the same, whether whether people are doing bad. They are gonna get the same. How you might get laid off and fired, but while you're there, you're gonna be making the same. They could be doing bad, you know. But somebody said true. I work for Amazon, and Amazon could take a a, a Amazon can take a left turn right now and start losing all types of money. You still gonna be getting paid eighteen dollars an hour. Well, I think they, they made it 15 to start out. And I think a lot of people there are making like 18. You're still going to be making that, whether they do bad or whether they do good. But when you come with somebody like me independently, you, you're going to feel that. If I'm doing bad, you're doing bad. When I used to work with Smitty with the F-150, he didn't get work, I didn't get paid. That's just how it was. That was the relationship. Now, that's the, that's the start out phases. Typically, when you have people like the Smitties with the F-150s and the people like me, it take years. When I'm like 60 years old, have my own thing going where I don't even work there no more. I got a certified, bona fide company that I'm bringing in people, may have a team of like 20 people out there operating Tiger Cats, skid steers, all types of things. Um, felling trees, the whole nine yards or whatever. And at that point... I will become the people I'm talking about where I pay you a certain amount and whether I do good or not you still get paid that amount but when you start out no one wants to, to work with the people that have the vision in the beginning because they don't they don't get paid the way they envision a boss should be getting paid you know sometimes bosses take pay cuts Sometimes you go two weeks without getting anything. You go two weeks without getting some some weeks you may make three thousand dollars one week and three hundred dollars the next week. And you got people who can't you got people who aren't built for that type of uncertainty. So they prefer to just go work for these corporations. Which I'm not blaming you. It makes fucking sense. But you just have people fantasizing the role of being their own boss and it's like they don't it don't always work out like you think it work out that's why you hear me talking about the type of things i'm talking about like how to put yourself out there and present yourself to people um who you might possibly be doing business with so you can start out and and you can get these type of customers it's just like i was talking about in the automotive field like you have a lot of mechanics that are good at what they do, but they work for Chrysler. They work for Toyota. They work for um, garages, for uh, gas stations. And these mechanics are great, skilled, blue collar. They, they love it. They do what they do. They're good at it. Flat rate hourly doesn't fucking matter. Commission doesn't matter. However, if you take that mechanic out of that environment and they're forced to to get the customers themselves a lot of them would go broke a lot of them would fail because school doesn't teach you that that doesn't come with being ASE certified a lot of mechan first of all a lot of mechanics they don't know how to talk to people they don't know how to interact with customers to make the customer feel good enough to want to come back to them to get the next oil change or the next service or to get some suspension components uh, replaced or to get a new transmission dropped in or to get some engine work done a lot of mechanics they they lack that skill set this is why when people go to dealerships they don't talk to the mechanic they talk to a, a a service advisor the managers they talk to the guy in the suit who 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 doesn't have a speck of dirt on his shirt so when you take a good mechanic a diesel mechanic it doesn't matter and they're forced and they're out there in the world and and they have to 
they have to get it for themselves a lot of them gonna fall short every time this is this is why i talk about how to interact with people this is why i talk about customer service like i learned this is a mobile mechanic but um it, it's just like you take a lion that's in a circus out of a circus and put it in the wild it's not going to know how to be a lion because that lion has been pampered while it was in that cage it got its food brought to it it got its water brought to it it was being hand fed and a lot of people like that because they can depend on that somewhat to a certain extent but when you go out there in the wild you see them lions every they on alert every meal they had to work for that shit didn't get a gazelle didn't get dropped off to them you know so you got people you got circus lions that fantasize to be the wild lions but they don't understand the struggle that comes with that and you got circus lions sitting in a cage having their meals brought to them talking about look at that lion that lion is a boss I, I would like to do that i don't want to be in the cage no more then that lion leaves that cage and that protection and is forced to interact with the wildlife and they don't know how to fucking do it they got teeth they're a lion they're big they're strong but they don't know the first thing about catching a gazelle you see what i'm saying that's that's that whole be your own boss shit. you got a lot of people fantasizing about being a boss but they have the skill set to be their own boss but they don't have the mentality that comes with it they don't they don't have the mental fortitude to endure weeks without pay they don't know how they don't know how to manage money they don't know how to manage money when they get it you know, that's why a lot of startup businesses often fail because they'll and especially when you go into debt they'll go into debt they'll take out a loan from the bank they'll buy a bunch of shit that they think people want and haven't done the groundwork to figure out what people want themselves and then before you know it they're swamped in bills and they don't know how they're gonna get by next thing you know they're, they're laying off a team and next thing you know they're working they go work back at the where they used to work at because they're like this shit stable so I don't even know how I got on this topic. Oh, I was talking about how I spoke with the mayor. I was talking, I was talking to the, the you know, the people in the town about barbecue and other things. Cause I was thinking, I'm thinking about opening up like a little food truck or something. Cause I haven't tasted any barbecue that's as good as my barbecue. And I'm not just tooting my own horn, but the, the stuff I make will blow everybody around here out the fucking water. Cause this man, this shit, man, look, I'm, yo, I'm the best there's no other way to put it i am the best and that that could be another avenue for um that that could be that could be another source of income so that's just how i'm thinking how you interact with people how you ask people what they want what they look what they look for and a lot of people don't fucking know they're like ah, a lot of people don't know what the fuck they want that's why it's up to you to show them what they what, what they want just like the one guy i went up to him and i seen him he's he fired up the grill and he can't he came walking across the grass i drove the gator back there and i said um do you need wood I said do you need wood he was like nah i just got these bundles he got some bullshit 7-eleven bundles or whoever whatever dude sold him the firewood it was just bullshit so i was like all right in his mind he thinks i got what i want so later i pulled up and i wrapped I did a, a quick bundle, like a $15 bundle. I wrapped some cherry wood. And I took all the bark off. Blew his fucking mind away. He was like, yo, this shit, what the... F and it's seasoned. Straight seasoned, no bark. And the reason, a lot of people, they don't care about bark being on the wood when they're using it to smoke meats, but it's an attention grabber. Like, people see that, and they're like, this wood has no bark. Some people, oh, it gives the meat a nasty taste. But you see how it sets me apart from the guy he got the bundles from. So that, that's, why I'm, that's why I talk the way I talk to people who may not understand. People who have jobs and, and don't understand instability with income. And, and not, not knowing how to manage the skill set they have to make it appealing to other people. Who would in the future want to 
use your services or whatever it is you have to offer whether it's painting a fucking picture or whatever the fuck you do like you go above and beyond and i always make sure that first impression i go above and beyond that's why when i did when i made that drop and the people were complaining about these these um people that have dump trucks how they would just back in the driveway and zzz, unload the bed and all the wood fall out on the driveway they leave dirt behind people hate that shit this is why i talk to the dump truck bros i'm like yo and people tell me oh you need a dump truck i'm like look the i've had like five people that i can remember tell me they like the fact i don't have a dump truck because in their mind dump truck when they get a delivery by dump truck that means extra dirt bark for some reason 7-eleven bags i don't fucking garcia vega rappers cigarello rappers fucking 211 cans and they're like yo i ordered wood not empty 211 cans and four local cans like you had there's a crushed four local can in my driveway you just dumped it like the people they load it with the with the skid steer with the grapple and they just mm, tsh, drop it in the truck they drive it there they dump it and roll the fuck out but when people see me with the truck and trailer in their minds they think yo that's clean wood and another thing i'll do is, is wood starts to season and age sometimes the bark will fall off sometimes it gets dusty when it gets rained on sometimes the mud will splash back so when you see my stacks right here before i even start to stack it to make the delivery i'll take the blower y'all see my blower i'll take the blower and blow it off so it's not just extremely dusty for no fucking reason people love that and then i carry a blower in the in my truck bed so that if I do make a mess on someone's property or someone's driveway, I can blow it off. And, and people take note of that. So when I'm charging more than everybody else in my area to, to get a cord delivered, they don't go look for cheaper prices. They like, this is where it's at. They don't, they don't want something for 220. They don't want that 99 cent shit. And this is how you go to war with Mexicans. I said all that to tell you this is how you go to war with Mexicans. It's not that Ben Shapiro shit. Illegal immigrants, this is how you combat them. This shit I'm telling you right now. By outdoing them. It doesn't matter if you charge more than them. But everybody here knows I've been at war with the Guadalamalans for a long fucking time. Because they do everything I do. They do it for less. So I got to be better, stronger, faster, quicker. You know my stuff ha my stuff has to has to everything i do lawn care anything pruning uh junk removal anything i do i gotta be better more serious show up on time be punctual let my no mean no and my yay mean mean yay you know not not the pussy foot around with people people don't like their time being wasted and this is how this is how you fight that that holder taking our jobs with a bunch of people who aren't out here doing the jobs in the first place i'm telling you how you fight that for any tradesman somebody said bg doesn't like guadalamalas nah they'll do shit for 99 cent and then fuck you up and then and then people are so lazy and people expect the best services for the cheapest price they expect you to have the same shit for 99 cent and when you say nah you know my cord's going for 350 or 300 they look at you like yo the essays is is doing deliveries for like 225 so why would i get why would i buy a cord of firewood from you for like 300 when i can get it from the essays down the street for for 180 and then you look at what at what the essays is bringing them and it's it's a face cord or a writ so people also like in firewood specifically there's a lot of people there's other things you can apply this to other things but i'm always true to my word if i say a cord i'm bringing a cord that's four by by four by eight stack that shit comes stack like i don't do that rick i don't do that face cord shit i don't even know what the fuck that is like i'm true to the actual laws of this shit and people notice that and they love it they like how come this cord has more wood in it than this cord the essay delivered last week like because he's selling it as a cord but it's really a face cord so it's not really a cord 
It's a Honda Accord. There you go. There you fucking it's a Honda Accord. I'm giving you true chords. So that man, that's all to it. Shout out to all the SAs and Mexicans and Guadalamalans and Nortenos. I see you and I raise you six. Straight competition, nothing but competition. I don't give a fuck whether you hop the border or not. You ain't gonna get work around here, nigga. I'm holding this shit down straight up. Somebody said core fits in a Honda truck. Bro, they'll dead ass be like, yo, the cords for 99 cent and then pull up in a Honda Civic and and empty that shit out out the trunk. <laughs> be like, it's a core. Like, you know, it, and a lot of people don't know better, but when when you show, it's up for you to show people what they want. That's that's all I'm saying. Like, that's all I'm saying. And I'm joking, but I'm not joking at the same time. Like, this is when it comes to competition, this is how you do it. You got to be better. You got to be willing to take a lot. That's why I said with the purchase of a core, you get a free a free five pound box of cherry wood chunks. I'll throw it in a mom's bag and just set it, set it on. There you go. And people are like, yo, what's that? I'm like cherry wood chunks. You got a smoker, don't you? A lot of men, they have a grill. Most men, I'll say 80% of all men everywhere have some type of grill, smoker, or outdoor cooking situation where they might need wood a lot of people don't like wood chunks some people just want straight 16 inch cuts they got a firebox they got an offset stick burner whatever but that's just it's a courtesy that's all it is that's that's what it's for it's a courtesy it's not they don't even have to actually use it they just take note especially women women take note of people that go above and beyond they're like yo he dropped some cherry wood off or some oak or whatever walnut it doesn't matter and it's like it's not exactly for you to use it's just it's just a courtesy it's a courtesy thing and and in people's minds they remember that and they like yo yo get that one guy back get him back no we don't want that cheap shit that shit a hundred dollars less for the same thing they're like no no go get bg call bg no like i'll pay more that's all right Somebody said when you have a superior product, you don't have to do much to sell it. Initially you do, then it sells itself. Right. And then it, it gets out through word of mouth. It gets out through through people locally in the community who, who then know of you and know they don't have to go all the way out to fucking Warrington to order something or go out to Manassas and, and mess with the essays to get something. You know, they don't they don't have to go up north out of D.C. and get a tree service company to come down and, and do some pruning. A lot of people don't know. This is why I'm, this is why I'm telling people how to mark, put yourself out there. A lot of people do not know you exist. That's not on them. That's on you. It's on you to let people know you exist. Because I know a lot of people, they. They, um. They just don't know how to get started. Like they have the skill set, but they don't they they don't find customers, nigga. It's on you to let people know you exist. Like you can't expect people to just you you can't expect people to just automatically be like, oh, this guy, this right next to me, he does this. I should go in. Nah, it don't work like that. That's on it's on you. But you, you're not going to get there if, you, if you, for one, if you don't log the fuck off the computer and exit the metaverse worrying about likes and dislikes. But two, if, if you don't speak to people. And, and three, if you if you constantly pushing people away with your air of superiority, thinking, you know, something that they don't fucking know. That's all I'm saying. Antivis, you in here? They don't teach alarm maintenance regimen in public schools. Autism Acres is lobbying to change it. That went bluegrass in the woods. Like he, he's running Autism Acres for me. Like he, you know, he know what he doing. He got the curriculum down pat. If you have any questions about Autism Acres or sending your autistic children to Autism Acres, contact him. He good people, you know, shoot him an email or what, what the fuck ever. 
you know, and, and you'll be taken care of. We'll make accommodations for your retarded child. With Tachi running free, who else knows how to fix VCR? With Tachi, I thought about you a couple days ago and you're fucking uh, shilling for VCR repairs. I was like, eh, this nigga with Tachi running free is... It's fucking VCR repairs. Like, I know what Tachi... Like, the other day I was out here splitting well. I was like, I know what Tachi is somewhere asking somebody if they need a VCR repairman. Like, just somewhere. Just... I just... <laughs> I don't... Where Antivis at? Antivis, you in here? You got that Jeep? You got that Jeep logo? Antivis was in. I didn't know Antivis or Antivis. I don't know how the fuck to say this shit. He got a, a Jeep Grand Cherokee for his display picture. He made a whole like little clip channel of me and shit. I didn't even know. I didn't know people made clip channels of me. But I came across one of them and he got some good clips on there. I say shit I don't remember saying or I forget that I said. And I say things in a certain way. It's just covered in like 18 hours of live streaming. And I'm like, yo, that, that was good. I'd be like, yo, who said that? He'd be like, you said that. Like, mm. like this shit need to be framed and bookmarked and, and shown in schools. But yeah, he did he did something. He he put out a clip I did on a call for an uprising and, and I guess I read the comments on that one and people didn't like that. You know, people love a call for an uprising. I guess it was a day somebody mentioned a call for an up. I don't know. And, and I just went into this whole tirade about a call for an uprising. I'm going to tell y'all this. Y'all can't take it personally when I talk about y'all favorite troopers. Like, I talk shit about everybody. 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 But specifically speaking, when it comes to a call for an uprising, you had people commenting and they was talking shit about me. They was like, oh, just because... He doesn't know or doesn't believe all what's going on doesn't mean it's not going to happen to him. It's just some wild comments on there. Like, people don't think I'm hip. Like, people, I guess people don't think, I guess people just see me, you know, t little clips of me talking and don't understand I've already been there, done that. Like, I've had that scared of everything mentality that they had. I used to have that. You know, I, I used to. I used to think people like a call for uprising and all these other people actually had solutions, actually had tangible, physical solutions, you know, because I didn't I don't know how to make the world a better place. And when you're in that mind frame, your goal is to make the world a better place the way you see fit. That's the thing, the way you see fit, you want to make the world a better place the way you see fit. So I used to be in that mind frame, too, but the world isn't mine as a matter of fact the scripture teaches that the world belongs to the prince of the power of the air so in order to be set apart you have to be set apart like the minute i stopped concerning myself with that bullshit i grew i actually grew and i've i've I felt better i felt better about the direction the world was going because none of that shit means anything to me None of that shit, because the alternative, which people call trutherism and these brands of, of, of truthers out here speaking their truth, the alternative they offer is just more bullshit. Like people think at a certain point is going to end or they're going to get to a conclusion of the matter. And that's never going to happen because it hasn't happened in the last 80 years since people started calling themselves truthers or in the last decade or whenever the fuck that shit started. Like like truthers have always been like people saying the government is doing this they're going to do this this shit has always been here and the bullshit has always happened right so just being a truther isn't enough so when you hear me talk about a call for an uprising and you get mad because you're like he's out here doing stuff and i ask you what and you say well he's waking people up understand this if you are against q q anon remember q with the weight porn it was like just trust the plan and you have to understand the ultimate goal of these truthers is a mass awakening, which is why they're out there truthering, right? The, the, their job is to wake as, as many people up as possible to their brand of truth. Correct. All right. Now that we established that, you do understand a mass awakening is as bad as trust the plan. You do understand that will never happen. And you do understand the people that do wake up nine times out of ten, they are bitches. So you can't get mad at me for calling people bitches. Because people are, in fact, bitches that will not make a change or make a stand for anything they believe in. 
all they do is get the information these truthers have to offer and then walk around everybody else with an air of superiority about them and feel like they're holier than thou and and mightier than all the little sheep running around them that's typically what most people do they get in the arguments they receive the truth they receive the brand of truth from the truthers and then they go around their family members and browbeat them with said truth and it turns their family members against them they don't they don't have any type of discernment they fall for every truth or spell and they and and above all else they constantly they constantly pay attention to mainstream media which if you ask them is all a lie so at that point why are you tainting yourself with lies that's why i said i gave people homework a while ago i was like don't watch that shit for a whole week go a whole week without watching the tv why none of that shit don't watch a call for an uprising fuck him cut that shit off don't don't listen to the uh the ice age farmer don't listen to none of these people talking about food shortages or anything fucking else and somebody was like how my, how will i know this was somebody said how will i know when food shortages come i said food shortages they've been talking about food shortages for like the past 30 fucking years all the prices is going to go up regardless whether or not you're paying attention or not so what benefit is it of you to pay attention except to prepare and when you're all done preparing then what what is the alternative what is the solution what is the conclusion of the whole matter they don't know they don't know what to do next all they know is we got to wake more people up to what wake more people up to what shit that they can't change shit that makes people depressed like you offer no way out is nothing somebody told me a call for uprising that that mean because i said what the fuck is he doing a call for uprising go ahead and uprise that's what i said if your name is a call for uprising then how about it's on you to go ahead and uprise and show people the way you're not uprising sitting here making bit shoot videos about uprising that's not how the fuck that works like you can't you can't you can't be a call for uprising and then never fucking uprise and then somebody corrected me and they said nah he means mentally he's trying to wake people up mentally and and when you look at the type of content a lot of people like him post and i know he's why he's probably watching i i called him a bitch on a couple k i give zero fucks about people's feelings these days but it's like what is the solution like somebody can't y'all heard me the other day somebody came on my live stream and said are you not worried about food shortages does anybody remember my answer no i'm not worried about food shortages because just like how i spent an hour talking to you about putting yourself out there willing and dealing and meeting people that's that's what you have to do to these farmers if you can't grow the food yourself there are plenty of people who started homesteading within the last three years alone more and more americans are homesteading more and more americans have food at a, on a mass scale that aren't directly tied to factory farming you have amish people every fucking where well at least out here we do you have farmers everywhere you have independent people producing that's on you to go out of your way they're not going to find you that's on you that's the alternative you can't grow it on your property go to somebody who can support somebody who can go support the local farmers then we'll go find them but they live so far away drive three hours then because constantly complaining about fucking food shortages isn't doing shit when his complaining and pointing out the fact there will be food shortages when has that ever stopped the fucking food shortage you know how many people pointed out the fact that toilet paper was disappearing off the shelves remember that shit did that shit stop toilet paper from disappearing from the shelves no it did not it didn't so understand when i criticize these people i'm coming from a place of reality these people a lot of y'all look up to for truth they want money it's about the money for them some people give zero fucks about the money and it's about a sense of power it's about a sense of having information other people don't know and they feel big as a result like the shit isn't even authentic the shit they telling you might be true but it's ego it's hey i know this and the other person doesn't know this watch me it's for views clicks and likes it is and this isn't no secret y'all know it even the people that love that shit know it these people are fucking entertainers all of them all of them 
Don't give me that a call for an uprising Ice Age farmer shit. All of them. There's nothing you could do on the computer screen or through your device that change the hearts of men. There is something you could do. But it's not what the fuck they're doing. Like, they have no fucking end goal. The end goal is just more fucking problems. How many people hang on to every 10 pull tweet? Like a life raft. They're like, well, this happened, and then you uh, that's the end. And then something else happened. And then the next day, something else happened. That's what, that's what it all is. It's a business of despair. It's a business of people feeling depressed and hopeless. You're drowning in hopelessness. And then they give you glimmers of hope in the form of politicians or new truthers. I paid my child support. Oh. I, paid the, I paid the rears, too. I paid... I paid my rears. I paid my rears. I don't, I don't understand this. That's a call for an uprising in the helicopters. <laughs> the fuck was I talking about? I paid the rears. That's the shit before you actually had to pay and put a dent in the actual shit that you owe. In case nobody knows what rears are. They're like, what the fuck is rears? That's the shit you got to pay before you can actually pay on the shit that you owe. Like, you got to pay that off. If you've been paying and you see the, the balance, the amount hasn't changed, and you're like, yo, I've been paying like 500 a month. For, what the fuck? And the shit not going down. They're like, because you've been paying rears. We haven't even got to the shit that you actually owe. That's what that helicopter is, making sure I'm paying my rears. I don't fucking know. A call for an uprising could have been in there. The point is, the majority of these people I talk shit about, they're in it for money, and it shows. It's not even a fucking secret. Maybe, remember the stream that got deleted? Oh, I did get kicked off of, uh, I got like, like, I got put in like timeout, like Susan Wojcicki did. She, you know, I don't, I don't. I don't know that shit for medical misinformation that that vid, that controlled opposition video it got clapped for medical misinformation because I said coronavirus isn't real which it's not it never fucking COVID-19 never existed it didn't they got me for medical misinformation that's what they're supposed to do I'm on them people shit talking shit about the agendas that they push that's what you're supposed to do anyway is that going to change anything i have to say no coronavirus was fake as fuck maybe it was about the controlled opposition shit i was talking about i don't fucking know maybe it's the fact i understand that truthers truthers are necessary to push certain agendas and people act like they don't fucking see it when y'all fucking do y'all do and I feel like most of the people that have a problem with me are the type of people that buy Hodge Twins merchandise. I don't know. I could be wrong, but that's just how I feel. I feel like these people, you agree that that one bird over there agrees with me too. That one bird over there agrees with me too. Maybe I can see this better than other people because I've dealt with that whole black community bullshit. And the lack of action that the black community takes against people they call devils. And people they say are oppressing them. And it's like your only solution is to protest and beg the people you say are devils and the people you say are oppressing you for privileges and rights. It's like you've completely taken the creator, the most high, Elohim, Yahweh, God out of the equation when you then beg the white man for rights, privileges. At what point do you put down your purse and take up arms? That's all I'm saying. And not that Black Panther bullshit. That shit was a bunch of, of commies pushing the devil's agenda. Communism. Communism. Don't give me that Black Panther shit. They were full of shit too. Huey P. Newton, all them niggas. All of all these fucking moves. This is why I said controlled opposition, black supremacy white supremacy they feed off of each other they need each other to survive they need it that's why when they when there are no examples of white supremacy directly they got to go to a esoteric uh 
example of white supremacy and be like this right here and this is why we we black supremacy they need each other to exist they can't do they can't do shit on your own you need can you need opposition and a third party group of people has realized they need to control the opposition that's all it is that's a, so it's not even nothing to concern yourself about that shit is retarded it's retarded why do you think people like Dr. Umar Johnson, he gets mad at black men who fuck white women? Like, yo, when you think about it, you're like, that's something the white man would say. And it is. But I'm just saying, if you put yourself in that world, you'd be like, that's something the white man would say. The white man would want to keep black men away from white women. Why? Because the offspring could then, if you want to go by numbers 118, you are after the house of your father. So could the offspring be considered black if you believe in this shit? Yes, they fucking could. Could they grow up in a black culture and be accepted as black? Yes, they fucking could. If you look at what Alexander the Great did and how he conquered, people point out the fact that he was a pedophile. I don't give a fuck. This is how he conquered. This is how his men conquered. They fucked the women of foreign lands. When, when the Grecians showed up, they were the minority. They took over villages and fucked the women, had offspring, and raised that offspring up with Grecian values. So at this point, you can see with that in mind, you can see they're just black supremacy, white supremacy, what the fuck ever, pan-Africanism, all that shit just pinging off of each other. Just pinging, ping, ping, ping. Need each other to survive. Because if you have no, oppo if you have no opposition, then it doesn't justify your position. This is why the, the left wing needs the right wing. Because without it, there's no justification for anything. Without that oppositional force there, they can't say vote for the lesser of two evils. Instead, what people could do, like they do with dictators, is be like, yo, that guy's full of shit. When somebody start gets on that, that bullshit, they could then say, they could then say, hey, that guy's full of shit. There is nobody else to blame. You need opposition so you could blame somebody for your fucked up actions and be like, well, they're, they're doing this, so we got to do this. You need it. This is what you need. You know what I'm telling you? Controlled opposition is a must. And no, COVID-19 does not fucking exist. This is what people are supposed to do when it comes to censorship. People would believe for the past week I have been censored. Wrong. I've been out here living my best life saying what the fuck I want to say. When they let me back on the, any fucking platform, I will then continue to say what the fuck I want to say. That's how you fucking win by not believing in censorship. Once they put a title on that shit and give it to you with a bow tie and you unwrap it and accept it as a premise, gotcha. You heard how many times I said COVID-19 is bullshit? That shit didn't exist. That shit, well, I don't give a fuck about those videos that came from China. That came from China. Of people falling, Chinamen falling the fuck out. That bitch was wearing a mad guy. That bitch was bred like a fish out of water. That bitch fell the fuck out. Her knees buckled. And every fucking truth of this side of the Mississippi played that video and got it in your subconscious. And gave you the premise. That's that gift. The bullshit gift. That was wrapped in a nice package with the bow tie on top. You unwrapped it and accepted the premise. Now in comes mainstream media for the coup de gras. Or however you say that shit. They, can't, they gave you the finish and blow. And just put a narrative on it. And then they proceeded to control the narrative with the lab leak. Then they showed you the patents and was like, well, you can't, you can't patent something that's, that's not natural. They gave you the bioweapon shit. They gave you all this bullshit, all these toxic breadcrumbs so you niggas could follow it. Because they know niggas lack discernment, for one. And they, they already know the truthers did their job in getting people to accept the groundwork, the premise. It's controlled opposition. Then they can point at each other and be like, well, this, well, this. Then they can get you to accept a bullshit narrative by saying Fauci's behind it. So now it became appealing to believe in the coronavirus itself. So you could blame Fauci for funding the lab. Yeah, they use what you hate against you. It's like people believe they're up on game about things, but they have no fucking idea. But instead of worrying about this shit, what you can do is 
First, people need a foundation. There's too many people out here wacky, wavy, inflatable. Second, I'm not a prophet. I'm not a messenger. I'm not your mom. I'm not your dad. I will offend you. I will call you a bitch personally, individually, grouply, community. So don't fucking listen to me. I talk my shit. That's what the fuck I'm supposed to do. I'm taking a break right I let, I let my hair down. I'm out here breathing. I'm out this bitch breathing. So don't take what the fuck I'm saying all super crip blood seriously like that. And thirdly, I realize, yo, people don't make videos about me. Maybe it's because... Maybe it's because there's nothing to make a video about. Remember that shit? I was like, all these fucking truthers out here that are anxious about getting at each other and exposing each other none of them said shit about me maybe it's because i don't have a merch store it could be that simple maybe if they expose their audience to me and they hear the way i talk about some of these merchants out here maybe they'll realize they have been following a fucking merchant that has nothing to offer at all except more problems how many people in here have a vehicle that vehicle check engine light comes on you take it in the problem gets fixed. You're happy. A day later, the check engine light comes back on. Something else is wrong with it. You fix it, you're happy. An hour later, the tire pressure sensor comes on. The brake light comes on. The ABS light comes on. The transmission control module breakdown light comes on. The ECM is fucked up, light comes on. An hour later, after you got it all fixed, you take that shit back in, it costs you some shit, you get it fixed, you're happy, you're riding down the road, the check engine light comes on back again. The check engine light is on again for something else entirely different. How long will it take you to get rid of that car? Just throw the whole fucking car away. It's giving you nothing but problems. How long? How many people in here get sick of working on a piece of a Honda Accord? It blew a spark plug. That shit shot out the engine block. You redlined it. The shit shot out the engine block. You take it and you get it fixed. A week later, there's a crack in the engine block. You're leaking coolant. More problems. More problems. More problems. Your emotion, you know how uh, the emotional trauma of some shit being fucked up with your vehicle after you just fixed it? You know what that does to people? It gives you bad gas. It gives you bad gas. How long before you throw that car away? What? So how long before y'all throw some of these fucking truthers away that give you nothing but problems and problems and problems? Improv food shortage. The sky is falling. D -d 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 look what he did. Drag queen story hour. How long? So don't act like you don't understand what the fuck I'm saying. And don't act all high and mighty when I talk shit about your favorite truther, a call for an uprising. Fuck him. A call for an uprising is a brand. I don't know that nigga personally. And you don't know that nigga personally. You don't know what the fuck that nigga doing. People are so quick to call other people controlled opposition. And you following a nigga you have never met. You've never met this nigga. Never. This nigga doesn't even own a, a grill to smoke meats with. How the fuck am I supposed to trust some... How the fuck am I, a grown man, supposed to trust another grown man that does not own a smoker? Y'all don't fucking hear me. How the fuck am I, a grown man, supposed to trust another grown man that doesn't own a truck and a trailer? I can see, I can hear a lot of answers. Like, well, I don't own a truck and trailer. I drive a Prius, but I'm the truth. I'll give you that. How the fuck am I supposed to trust somebody that doesn't log the fuck off the computer? How the fuck am I supposed to trust somebody's intuition when all they do is digest mainstream media narrative so they can disperse it to you?
because they feel like they put a better perspective on the bullshit. If you know what the main, if you know the mainstream media, those out nothing but lies. Yet you continue to watch it and think you're going to give your audience an honest perspective on a fucking lie. How the fuck can I trust you? As if you know what the fuck you're talking about to be able to give any type of perspective on the bullshit that they're giving you. This is why people bring me problems and I'm like, fuck it. Leave it to Beaver. Flat the fuck out. Somebody hit me with the Russia-Ukraine shit. You don't know what the fuck going on with Russia-Ukraine. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, you wouldn't even know about a Russia-Ukraine conflict if, the, if your device and the media didn't tell you. You would be out here sucking on a lollipop, fixing the hole in your exhaust system. You would, you would be none the wiser. But now it has come to you through this invisible pipeline. Now you're all up in arms about it. Now you pick sides. Which a lot of you niggas say, I'm not in the matrix, but you pick a side. I stand with Putin. And you really think you're not in the matrix? I stand with Ukraine. Zelensky, Putin, pick one. Wrong. Who you pick? Wrong. It doesn't fucking matter. That's why I said some of y'all need to recalk your fucking... Somebody asked me what the fuck I'm doing. I'm talking about a call for an uprising. A call for an uprising out here waking people up. What are you doing? Employing my nephews. Raising a daughter. At the very least, I am recalking bathtubs. Which is infinitely more important than anything a call for an uprising has to say. Some of y'all ain't here live chatting. Y'all need to recall that. Y'all got mildew dude, by y'all shit stink. How fucking dare you? How fucking dare half of y'all here sit up there and be worried about what these truthers and Steven Crowder and all and Joe Rogan. I like Joe Rogan. Y'all niggas more worried about Elon Musk buying Twitter than than recalking your bath. Your bathroom is nasty, nigga. You need to get that hair out the drain. Every day, you and your wife and your kids take a take a, a shower in that pool of water. It pulls up at your feet, and you just splashing in it with your big toe. That dirty ass water, you dirty bitch. But you sitting here telling me a call for an uprising is delivering the truth. What are you doing, bitch? I'm the nigga that'll recalk your fucking bathtub, redo your bathroom, and clean out your drain. You nasty fuck. I'm the nigga when your car gives you problem, after problem, after problem, after problem, and then you get it fixed and your car gives you another problem, another check engine like, yeah, I'm the nigga that fixes that. That's me. That's me. You seen the channel, Barricade Garage. What's the logo? What that shit say? No problems, only solutions. No problems, only solutions. What's wrong with your shit? You can't get nowhere without your vehicle being. Don't ask me, what am I doing? I'm an automotive technician. Look up blue collar jobs. What's one of the first thing that comes up? Aircraft mechanic and auto mechanic. I've been putting people lives together for a long since you was a twinkling in your daddy eye, boy. I'm not that old. I've been doing this shit for a while. And that's more important. Fixing somebody's car. All that truth or shit ends when people log out. You realize that, right? Now imagine that person logging. Imagine the person that said a call for uprising is waking people up. What are you doing? Imagine that person logs out their device, their computer, gets in their vehicle to start it, and it doesn't fucking start. What is the first thing they're going to do? Are they going to call a call for uprising? Or are they going to pick up the phone and call me? What? What'd you say? 
I couldn't hear you. These niggas talking about what are you doing? When they log out that computer and they get in their vehicle to go somewhere and it does not start, who are they going to call? Tim Pool, Steven Crowder, a call for an uprising, Brian from High Impact Flicks, Richie from Boston, they might call him. Or are they going to call me? Who? Bro, yo, you, you don't realize how fucked up your life is until you get in the vehicle and it won't fucking start. And you think to yourself in a dead ass, in a dead dick ass car, like, yo, I got shit to do today. You ever got in a vehicle that won't start? You look at, you, every time you turn, it get, that's your only vehicle. Who gonna take you to the store? Nobody, because you don't know how to fucking talk to people. You don't know how to go outside. You're stuck in the metaverse complaining about the metaverse. So now no one wants to help your dumb ass, you dead dick dog. With a clapped out Ultima that won't start in the driveway looking retarded. Calling me a shill. <laughs> and then calling me, hey big dog, I know, I know, I know you're a shill. I know, I know you might not be a shill. But look here, like my shit won't start, right? I was wondering if man, I don't even know where to begin. I don't know. I have no fucking clue. I don't even know. It just, it just, I thought about calling a truther, but then I was like, well, the shit they talking about really doesn't fucking matter. Cause how the fuck I'm gonna get to work? You worried about a food shortage, nigga, you can't, your car won't even cut on so you can make it to the grocery store to see a food shortage. You're stuck at home. Talking about the buses, there ain't no fucking buses running without no mechanics. Get the fuck out of here. And then people get mad at me because they hear the way I talk because I'm so straightforward. And then you have people... You had, and then I noticed you have people that actively go out of their way to not address certain shit I say because then that puts the heat back on them. And people are like, well, you are. You are kind of, I know you're my favorite content creator, but you are a buster. Like you are, like you are a bitch. Like now that I hear, the more I listen to Barricade Garage, matter of fact, you are a bitch. Didn't you wear a mask to get on the airplane so you can go to your speaking engagement and nail go? Yes, you did, nigga. You were selling infant masks. It puts shit in a new perspective. Don't call me out. You fucking can't. And I thought about it. I was like, for one, because I have no merch store. I'm not fucking with Teespring. I'm not fucking with Teespring. I'm not one of these make America great again niggas out here with a merch store. Everything made in China. I'm not the fucking Hodge twins. And, and, and above all else, you can't fucking censor me. You can't censor me. I'm going to tell y'all this. This is some real shit. This, this, this not a shot taken to anybody. This isn't. Th these aren't shots. These are not shots. But pay attention, people. I don't know how you niggas trust... I'm going to say that again. I don't know how you niggas trust people who make a living online being truthers. It seems like from the get-go, they are controlled. Because as soon as whatever platform they are on threaten to control or delete them, they change up their speech. I don't know. What do these niggas, this is why I gave people friendly advice. I was like, yo, you a truth or online? You're already controlled opposition. There's just certain shit you say you can't say. And what do you hear a lot of them doing? Well, don't say this so I can get this clip out. Or don't say this so that these people over here can hear me. Or share this message with your grandma, Nana, and them. They conform to the speech and the hate laws, the hate speech laws, that, that platform has presented for them.
This is these are facts. These are facts. The reason they are allowed to exist anywhere is because they are necessary. It's called controlled opposition. I went over this already. This is why they exist. You think they're speaking truth. They're supposed to. It is needed. Good cop, bad cop. It's necessary. Donald Trump, mainstream media. Thor, Thanos. Spider-Man, Venom. It's necessary. It, it's what pulls you in and keeps you active in this shit that you call a matrix. It, it's what makes you think you took the red pill, but really, nigga, you, you took the blue pill. If you want to take pills, you took the blue pill. If 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 you're if you're mad at me for talking shit about a call for an uprising, I don't know that nigga individually, personally. I'm talking about a call for an uprising as the brand. If you're mad at me for that, because you feel like he's waking people up, that's a blue pill. You do realize waking people up has never changed anything. What action are the people he's waking up taking? What action is he taking except for being online? Telling you to wake up and then giving you despair. What action? What action? Somebody told me, Tim, well, Tim Pool has chickens. Tim Pool has a fuck them chickens. What does Tim Pool talk about? What's the bread and butter on YouTube for truthers? Despair. It's true. Fucked up shit sales. Nobody wants to hear everything being all cookies and bubbles. Y'all don't even want to hear that. That doesn't keep that doesn't keep up the engagement. But the algorithms know this. This is why they'll they'll randomly send you a video of a Vietnamese person blowing their, their dickhead off. And you're like, ooh, and then you share it. This is why y'all watch Lil Nas X gay ass parade around on stage with Lucifer twerking on that man lap like that and y'all shared it and to the faggot that sent me that video you are a faggot i don't give a fuck if you're saying look at this ain't this nasty nigga you watched it you fucking faggot and then you spread that amongst your circles it's that controlled opposition element it is it's no different than people sending me a video of matt walsh debating the tranny that shit don't impress me. I remember we used to keep our retarded people in the basement when company came over so as not to offend the company that came over. You don't argue with retarded people. For one, their mental capacity isn't up there with yours. Which is why that transgenderism shit that y'all call it transgenderism shit, it's, it's classified as a mental disorder. So you give Matt Walsh points for, for debating someone who has a fucking mental disorder clearly a man but believes wholeheartedly they are a woman no both of them niggas is retarded men don't do that men have to set the standard men do not debate boys that think they're girls we don't we don't entertain that shit. Alex Jones on the couch with the boy, with Blair White. Men don't do that type of shit. The standard is so low for men everywhere that people seem to have forgotten what men used to be. So when you do see a real man interact with the world, and engage with you you get offended why because i called your favorite truther a bitch why because he is but that speech offends you i 
Alex Jones a bitch too for sitting on the couch with that nigga. You're a bitch. There gotta be a line drawn somewhere. I don't give a fuck about frogs being gay. I don't give a fuck about AstraZeneca. I don't give a fuck about Johnson and Johnson's third trial turning a fucking Disney princess into a frog. Look what people do. People, people. So when you exalt somebody to the status of truther, you will always be misled. Always. This is what I told you. Don't fucking follow me. Don't fucking follow me. Don't, don't exalt me. Don't butter my biscuits. Don't put me on a pedestal. I will let you the fuck down. I am man. I take a shit and it stinks the same way your shit stinks. Some of y'all act like other people's shit don't stink. Y'all shit stink. Some of y'all shit stink. I smell it from here. Some of y'all need to go in and clean out y'all toilet bowl. Y'all full of shit. And then act like these people who you look up to don't shit. This is why a lot of y'all get misled. Y'all forget people take shits and it stinks. Everybody's shit stink. They do. People are living in a fucking fantasy land. In a world where hard work pays off and humans are the resources, humans have forgotten that humans take shits and them shits stink. So then you start exalting people. King, queen, emperor. The, Elon Musk going to bring back free speech. Elon Musk is retarded. He bought Twitter with his own money. That nigga went into debt. In fact, who did it? I heard Anomaly talking about that shit the other day. This nigga Elon Musk. It's a parasailing spider on me. He just didn't like me saying Elon Musk is a bitch. This nigga Elon Musk went into debt. Unfathomable debt. This nigga went in, Elon Musk went into unthinkable debt. To even come at the table and, and talk to the people at Twitter. This nigga took so much money from the banks. This nigga got billions and billions of dollars from the banks. Now, if somebody did that to your politicians, you would immediately say, oh, Jew world order much. <laughs> you would um, you would immediately say, oh, he's owned by the banks. The bankers own him. A lot of the people that they equate bankers with small hats are sitting here praising Elon Musk as if he didn't just take over 10 billion dollars of debt from the banks to acquire Twitter and then make promises to the bank about what he would do with Twitter. Nigga didn't use his own fucking money. Debt. More debt. And more debt. Put debt on top of debt. Put it debt with two B's, nigga. Capital D's. With lowercase T's. Big debt. This nigga's debt is astronomical. And then he paid for a lot of it with his stock from Tesla. Just like I get, I got this to put up. And y'all running around here like this nigga's really for you. I seen that shit all week. Some of the gayest people. Y'all weird. Y'all fucking weird. You're weird. You're fucking weird. You will call anybody. You will call me controlled opposition if I took $2 from a bank. Wait, did you hear Barricade Garage took a $10 bill, the bank paid, gave him a $10 bill. So he could do, yeah, that nigga's controlled opposition. That, but the same niggas is sitting here sucking Elon Musk autistic dick. A lot of y'all need to wipe y'all mouths. That's all the fuck I'm saying. Debt. Debt. Billions of dollars in debt for Twitter and, and niggas running around here and think it's for them. 
And people got the nerve to call me narcissistic. Y'all think ever the world y'all think the world revolves around you. No one gives a fuck about you. That's up for you to do. That's up for you to give a fuck about you. That's up for you. I just showed y'all how to beat censorship. Literally. I just showed you freedom of speech. In all of its authenticity. I'm back on here saying the same fucking shit COVID-19 was fake as fuck. I know Walmart strollers that are more real than that bullshit COVID-19 shit. And y'all know them Walmart strollers is fluke as fuck. Them shit's flimsy as shit. The knees buckle on them bitches. But see, you got a lot of people that... It, and this ain't the first time. It ain't even nothing. It's nothing to write home about. It's, it's just what happens. If you gonna talk the shit I do, that's what the fuck comes with it. Oh, well. Fuck it. Leave it the beaver. I don't make my living on here. And it's harder, it's getting harder and harder for me to trust people who make a living on here. Especially when you think about it from the truth or aspect. A lot of y'all don't think this is entertainment. Some of y'all think these people on here are the real fucking deal. No, they're entertainment. The minute you decide to start making a living doing this shit, the same shit you complain about you getting censored from, you're enter fucking tainment. You're not a upriser. You're not going to uprise. Nigga, you want money. You want money. You want money. And everybody can fucking see it. I'm entertainment. I'm entertainment. I just set myself apart because I don't take donations and I don't cut on the fucking super chats. Bro, I'm showing you what a stand-up man is. Anything I get, from here on out, people can't say, y'all made me. You can't do that. And then you would have every right to sit up there and make videos criticizing me. But I'm not your bitch. And then to that one person that said I tap dance to my audience, you're a bitch. Because you buy Hosh Twins merchandise. You're a bitch. No one in this audience can say they fucking made me. They can't. They fucking can't. You know what a powerful example of a real man is to the youth? Somebody that says, hey, I'm going to get a side by side so I can be more effective at what it is I do. And then a couple weeks later, you see me roll out the John Deere Gator. That's manhood 101. That's manhood 101. That's that's. That's priceless. You, you then can't say, I took the excuse away from you. A lot of people use the excuse, well, you took donations, you do this, you do I took all that bullshit away. You can't say that. So there's no excuse why you can't get up, get out, and get something. There's no fucking excuse. There's no excuse. Somebody say drug dealing 101. <laughs> There's no fucking excuse. What do you mean? I want y'all see me out here with equipment I didn't have one month. And then come three months later, equipment. Every fucking wear. It's like, what the fuck has he been doing? I'm saying you can't use the excuse like, yo, we, we, the people we made you, we sent you this, da 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 da, making videos and shit, talking about we donated this, we didn't get that. You can't, then why you can't say nothing? You can't fuck with Barricade Garage at all. Like you can't, they can't even come for me. Because the same people out there telling you to get up, get out, and get something got y'all sending them money. So will the real men please stand the fuck up and show the youth how to get up, get out, and get something? If I did that, then my message would be diluted by you thinking you have to go online to make money. Nah, nigga, I'm keeping it out here. This reality. This is reality based. These ain't shots fired at anybody. I'm just saying I took, I chose the harder way. 
I chose the harder way. No merch store. No, mer no, no merch store. Not even at the height of what Barricade Garage could have been. And all the Jews came to me and was like, yo, we can get you some, we can get you some merch, nigga. Everybody's watching you. You popping right now. Nah, nigga. Ain't no super chats. Remember high impact flicks? I was thinking about it. I was like, how come all the shit I talk about high impact flicks, he hasn't made a video about me yet. And I know that nigga watches me. Shout out to high impact flicks. But High Impact Flicks came on here one day in the live chat and said, hey, buddy, how can turn your super chats on? I said, no. No. And then I proceeded to give that nigga 1,000. I said, nigga, them fucking flashlights, them super chat, them fucking flashlights blinging like that in people's faces for five fucking minutes before you get to the title of the video, which is typically called why all niggas will die in America by 2022. That fucking flashlight out of here. And then people in the live chat proceeded to give him 1000 then he went somewhere else. And I thought I was thinking about it yesterday. I was like, that's how people feel like they own you. When people give you money, you have some people, it's people I even like. It's people I even like that say, yo, I went to somebody who I disagree with live chat and super chatted to, to say a message so they can get a back and forth going. Bro, there's no hypocrite in my body. There's not a hypocritical bone in my body. There is, but not when it comes to this online shit. So then he would have every right to go back to his high impact flicks channel and be like, Barry K. Garage is dead. He's dead. Nigga, you super chat me $20 and think you could tie up my fucking time. Bro, I'm showing you you don't need that shit. That's how you beat censorship. That is how you beat censorship. By turning down the money that the, the, the corporations and companies like YouTube and, and Twitter didn't turn down. That's up for you on an individual basis to do. That's how you set the trend. You make it a trend. Make authenticity great again. If, if they didn't turn down the money for that bullshit, then you turn it down. If you know that's an avenue of control and cut out the fat. Cut out the fat. Cut it out. Don't even go there. Catherine K said, but don't you ever get a strike? You speak too much truth. Bro, I've been strike like shit. There's no point in talking about strikes. That shit doesn't do nothing, but it doesn't do is there's no point to talk about strikes at all. I just use the current one as a fucking example. It doesn't change the fact that COVID-19 isn't real. It doesn't change the fact that, yeah, I'm still going to fucking talk about this. It doesn't change the fact that I do not rely on this bullshit to fund my way of life which is with which is what they use to get a lot of people on board and some of these people y'all call truthers on board just like that on benjamin rockfin shit getting kicked off rockfin you had a nigga made a video on, on benjamin it was like i say a lot he said i say a lot of important shit on rockfin Owen Benjamin goes and gets kicked off a of rock fan. And, and then this nigga said, I, I think Rockfin did the right thing. Because I say a lot of things that I can't say on YouTube. And Rockfin leaves me alone. So freedom of speech has not. I'm like, these are the same niggas that was just sitting here talking all this shit about YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, every fucking thing else. Freedom of speech this, freedom of speech that, but when you're allowed to stay on the platform and make your fucking money talking the shit you want to talk about, you don't give a fuck what happens to anybody else. So it's like at this point, yeah, I realize, fuck y'all freedom of speech. Fuck it. Leave it to Beaver. And I'm going to tell you why. Because people don't even give a fuck about freedom of speech. They don't.
people give a fuck about freedom to make money. It's about the money. All these fucking truthers that stayed on YouTube when they saw all these other people get control alt deleted was like, well, I got to make the money. People use this. People use this as a way. People who use shit like this, YouTube, social media, as a means by which to make money to fund their lifestyles. Then they say they are about something. And then when it comes time to be about the something they say they are about, they justify their lack of action, either by saying, I got kids, I got to feed my family, or by saying, hey, it didn't happen to me. It's just like the 2A community, that bullshit community. Well, they didn't take my guns. Well, I'm not a felon. The same shit is people being people full of shit. And the only thing about it why I'm bringing it up is because these are the type of people that people like you idolize. This is why I said y'all think other people's shit don't stink. It fucking does. To that one lady who was who was all up my ass talking about you. How dare you criticize a call for an uprising? Fuck a call for an uprising and fuck you too. You stinking bitch. Your husband hasn't recalked that bathtub. How fucking dare you? Don't ever in your life come at me for talking shit about anybody. And your husband can't do the bare minimum of fixing your fucking Jaguar. That shit needed a water pump five months ago. You broke bitch. You stank butt bitch. You need new plumbing bitch. Your water heater groaning like shit down there. You or your husband looking fucking stupid, don't know what the fuck to do, but you're on here talking shit about me. You're on here talking shit about me for talking shit about a nigga that can't do shit for you. What if all of you, what if all the people here, sons, grew up to become a call for an uprising? Really, nigga? What the f Really? Who would get shit done? Because all these vain ass niggas would be looking at themselves on the fucking computer thinking they have a fucking audience that they can just complain about random problems to it sounds like i'm doing it now i realize that i am they're playing baseball down there it sounds like i'm doing the same thing i am there's a strong argument for that but if the what if the whole world grew up like that they just seen niggas online like a call for an uprising and salty cracker and all these other weird ass niggas and they're like, I want to do that because these niggas make up so much fucking money doing it. Why the fuck would I want to get into plumbing or trucking or any fucking thing for that matter? I could be a Tim Pool ass nigga. Look what happened now. Everybody's too busy reporting and, and nobody's actually getting shit done. We have power lines down. The fucking power line laying in the fucking street. You got so many dead, dead, dick ass cars sitting in people's driveway and, and people, I don't know, I absolutely don't know what's wrong with my vehicle. I wouldn't start my son. I got a son, but he doesn't want to know how to fix anything because he wants to, he'd see Tim Pool and he liked Tim Pool and now he want to go work for Tim Pool and he want to report on the news like Tim Pool. He doesn't want to do anything at all. He doesn't want to work. But he complains about the Guadalamalans. He's waking people up. Fuck you and your wake ups. All these niggas that's waking up are a bunch of bitches. Fuck each and every last one of them. Wake up and do what? Nigga, that, that's, that's what else she said. She said he's waking people up. What the fuck do people do once they have woken up? No one can tell me that. What do you then do? What do you then do? No one can fucking tell me that. Somebody says Salty Cool though. Fuck Salty Cracker as a brand and fuck his bagel. Flat the fuck out. Flat out. Don't act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. A lot of people gonna make this shit personal. And a lot of people gonna get offended on other people's behalf. Don't do that. Then you become a bitch. Now I have to talk about you individually. 
Yeah, because he's like a Jew or something. I think Jews eat bagels. I talked to Bernie Sanders. He was like, we do tuna. Bernie Sanders go everywhere with a fucking tuna fork in his like breast pocket. I've talked to him. That's absolutely right. <laughs> that, that tuna fork. They said I'm from Vermont, but I'm absolutely not. I'm from East New York and I keep that tuna fork. Salty Cracker has a bagel. He's a young Jew. He's a, he's a young old Jew. He hasn't gotten that rank yet. He's still got that paper mache small hat. Yeah. Somebody said back, is he still ranting? I'm, I, I'm ranting like shit. There's a strong argument. Yo, will you shut the fuck up? There's a strong argument for me ranting. I'm not even gonna lie. That bird just attacked another bird. Nature's scary. There's a strong argument for what you people are talking about. I'm going to talk shit about everybody you guys love. Everybody. All of them. All of them. You got Blue Jays, BG. I've got Cardinals. We got Cardinals too, they just stay quiet because the Blue Jays are around. We got Cardinals, sometimes you'll hear them singing. You'll hear, you'll hear them singing. The females come out of nowhere, little dirty burgundy birds, they dirty burgundy. Then the males come out of nowhere, bright red, just flaming. Fucking Johnny from Fantastic Four. They just show the fuck up, flame on! And the fucking females are like, oh, you cut the color down on your breast pocket, it's a little bit bright for me. I'm a fucking flamer! So we got Cardinals. They do what they do. They just do it quietly while the Blue Jays are out. Blue Jays are aggressive. Blue Jays are the Nissan Ultima drivers of the bird world. And all of them do look like they're from New Jersey. There's no lie. These are just the facts, folks. <laughs> yeah, these are just the facts, folks. <laughs> they have that Newark, New Jersey look. <laughs> just the dirty... With a chin strap. They got this shit. They got the chin strap. Come on, I said BG. BG don't know who Undead is. BG gets Putang. Nah, I don't know who Undead is. I don't do that. I don't know. BG, you need a bee farm. I'll buy some honey from you. Okay, well. Blue Jays will peck you just for giggles. Well, I've never had one attack me personally, but they do attack the tufted tit mice in the area quite often. Blue Jays tried just to try chasing robins away from the food I put out. Man, guys, listen. The bullshit that people come up with. Not to rant again, but no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna head a different direction. Can you jump start? Can you jump start my XJ? Well, you might you got a parasitic draw. I don't know what to tell you, Watachi. You better start pulling fuses, checking fuses. You put a, a clamp of multimeter on that battery and pull fuses and look and see if, if you have any voltage drops or, or any fluctuations in the voltage when you start pulling fuses so you can know that's the area and that's the line of wiring or the bus you need to look at if you're having electrical issues. I don't know what to fucking tell you. This is like the second time you talk about jump starting the XJ. Yo shit. I don't know. It's beyond your battery. Or clean your fucking battery terminals, cuz. That shit all coked up, cracked up on there like crack cocaine like Harlem in the 80s. Nigga, clean that shit. Go clean that shit with Tachi. They, they sell the little kits. The little shit you could put on the bat, the wire brush. They put on the, the battery terminal to clean. You got all that corrosion on there, that calcium line rush shit on there. 
The fuck is that about? Go clean that shit. The fuck you you're not getting a proper connection. You're not your ground cable weird as fuck right now. Your ground cable <laughs> wants to hop in the live chat and give you directions. Nigga, that shit like nigga, you need to clean me. Unclamp me, unhook me, clean me, wire brush me, put and, and throw some dielectric grease around the edges so it don't oxidize or happen again and put me back together. I cut on. That shit wanna give you the whole rundown. Clean that old ass shit box you got. Just clean it. Just clean Watachi. Your shit, your the Watachi, just in general, your XJ look like it smell like Marlboro Reds. Vacuum that shit. Go somewhere, they got a shop vac, vacuum that shit with Tachi. You got nothing but VCR parts in the back smelling like Marlboro Red. Clean that shit. Clean the battery terminals. Shout out to Watachi running free. Spare free said Alfa Romeo was my first car. Oh, fancy. You're fucking fancy, huh? You're, you're the type of... This nigga said Alfa Romeo was my first car. You're the type of person that wants the, the crust cut off of their sandwiches. You don't like the brown part on your bread. It's too brown! Somebody said you going in on him like that. Well, Tachi know that XJ he has smells like nothing but ass, elbows, and Marlboro Reds. With a whole bunch of spare VCR parts at the back. He got the back seat flipped down. All it is is back. Straight front seats and back. There is no second set of seats. That shit flipped down. He, he removed. You removed it, didn't you? You see wheel arches and everything else. VCR parts. Broom handles. That shit vacuum that shit. Shout out to Watachi running free. And he not the only one. So some of y'all in here live chatting and, and laughing like y'all shit don't stink. Some of y'all need to clean out y'all Nissan Altimas. Some of y'all still got Swiss cake rolls smashed to the carpet underneath the, the secondary carpet in the back seat of y'all shit. And then some people be like, oh, I got kids. No, that's not an excuse, you nasty motherfucker. Talking about I got kids. Clean that shit. That would come with kids, cleaning up shit. Go clean that shit. I sit in your shit, sitting on Skittles, smashed up Skittles and shit. Urine, your shit smell like urine. Some people got dogs and driving around in their jeeps with them shit. Dog hair all on, got the nerve to have cloth seats. This shit never comes out of cloth seats. Your shit perpetually smells like dog ass. Yo shit, boof. Yo shit, boop boof. Some of y'all in here got five dogs and y'all have them all in one vehicle at the same fucking time on a long ass family field trip. Yo shit smell like, hey, your dog go outside, take a shit, and then they put their bare asshole right there on that fucking passenger seat. And now your shit smell like shit and the people you give rise to are too scared to tell you. I'm telling you, your shit stinks. Somebody said, damn, what did I jump into? Oh, DM Collins 1970. Man, what's up with you, bro? What's up with you, DM Collins 1977? That's what's up. What else y'all talking about? I'm about to ride. I'm done. I'm done. I ain't got shit to do. I got y'all seen the cedar. I got cedar. Just got done pressure washing the driveway. Oh, shout out to you. 
What state you in? Y'all got them weird ass laws about runoff. About runoff water. Some some customers care about shit like that. They'd be like, this is the water runoff and I gotta drain and I it's against the law. And you might have some people. Some people don't give a fuck. They're like, yeah, full sin. So you got some people that are like, oh, well, the, 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 the water running off the driveway is gonna affect the turtles. Ben said, I don't live in a Marifat land. A Marifat? A Marifat. Um, fat Americans? Fat American land? Where the fuck do you live? Australia? Somebody said, Pennsylvania sucks. I need to move back to Maryland. I like Pennsylvania. Ain't nothing inherently wrong with Pennsylvania. I, I fancy moving to Pennsylvania. They got a lot of land out there. I don't know how cheap it is out there, but I heard some good things about Pennsylvania. I can't. You know. Somebody right, said, where you at, BG? I'm in Virginia. Somebody said, keep the car doggy to keep the humans away man your dog smell like ash juice dumpster juice banana nut juice clean that shit people dog listen you can't tell me nothing i used to work at a car wash people will come in with their dogs listen bro i've seen some shit i can post some Man, look. Brother, I don't even want to talk about it. Y'all dog people need to tighten the fuck up, though. Uh, people are scared to tell you this. I'm not. You need to tighten the fuck up. Please? I said please. <laughs> Clean that shit. Somebody said Wisconsin has a lot of land. My friend just scored a 10-acre land. I like Wisconsin. I like Wisconsin. I get a lot of business in Wisconsin. I like that. Car wash. Car wash. Did I say, did I put an R in there? I put the hard R in car wash. But car wash, you already know what it is. I'm just from that, I'm just from that area where we put the R in there. AD Mo and Co. Them fighting words. Don't say that in the chat because then that's going to get a debate going. <laughs> he said dogs shall only live outside. That's my take too. But I know there's a lot of people in here who like to have the dogs on the, on the countertops while they're cooking with a shitty ass sitting right next to the burner. So I'm not going to go there just to keep the peace because I want to keep the peace. Because I don't want to call people out for having dogs with shitty asses sitting right next to the apple pie that you have cooling off. Or a cat cleaning themselves next to the food you have just pulled out the oven. Just all exposed. You didn't even cover the food. Just a cat ass. Cat doing the fuck out one. <laughs> Somebody said, who the fuck does that? Man, look, a cat ass. A cat will clean itself off next to the... Next to a meal that's cooling off and just... All that extracurricular shit just flying through the air and just... You know, when you think about it. It's just like, yo, did you clean? You look at your cat. Like, did you just clean your ass next to my open bowl of cereal? Even the open bowl of cereal, anything wet, like shit likes to stick to anything wet. So if you have just poured milk on your cereal and your cat cleans his ass next to your bowl, you gonna get some fibers, some, 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 uh, some cat asses, some ass juice hairs. You gonna get something. It's like, yo, my fucking cereal bowl. You ever put a cereal bowl, you ever put something on the table, your plate, and it was like, oh, I forgot something. Went upstairs to go get it and came back down and the cat was right next to your plate. 
some people share the share the same spoon with they some people share utensils with their animals like that uh, like that one chick on youtube with that dumb ass pig that big ass pig wilbur big ass pig big 500 pound pig she let sleep in the bed she's sitting there she'll take a bite and then get him a bite and then sit there and keep taking a bite of the same fucking bar Somebody said, I doubt anyone here eats cereal. I don't know what people here eat. I'm just making a general, I'm just making a general example. And cereal was the first thing that popped in my mind. Cause when you, when you saw in the cherry wood that's been seasoned for about like six months, it smells like fruity pebbles. So I, that's just what came to my mind. Somebody told me I need to stick the wood and stop worrying about the, the state the world is in. Cause I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Because I criticized, because I said something about a call for an uprising. Mind you, I don't. I don't know this nigga personally. They just didn't like the fact that I said something about a call for an uprising. He's talking about a mental uprising, BG. That's what I'm talking about. What the fuck do you think? You think I think that nigga's built to go out there with tiki torches and chase down politicians? That nigga's a whole bitch. Of course, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the mental shit you're talking about. This nigga's not built for the these nigga y'all follow people that aren't even no nah, I'm going there no nah, fuck y'all I'm going back fuck y'all I'm going back fuck y'all y'all follow these niggas that's not even built for combat y'all have whole idols out here the 80 pounds wet and wearing boots Y'all fuck y'all think computer geeks are gonna take you to the promised land and back. Nigga got mad at me. Well, you don't even know how to open up another app on your phone. I don't because it's fucking inconvenient and my thumbs are too big to sit here and keep arguing with niggas in the comments. I got big ass thumbs. I'm not gonna sit here and thumb my fucking life away. Like my thumb, wow, son, I'll choke the fuck out you with my thumb. Like thumb wars, thumb wrestling. I'm not sitting here and I don't do the laptop shit. I don't have a laptop. I click go, I go. Y'all, a call for an uprising. It do what, nigga? We wait on you. Grab the tiki torches and the pitchfork. I can't, I don't trust nobody that doesn't have a pitchfork. You don't even have a pitchfork. I got guns now, BG. Everybody use a gun. Who have you shot? You're not going to shoot shit. That's why people get mad because I call it, bro, you talk like you bout that shit. You need to be bout that shit. A call for an uprising. I know you in here. You need to change your name to Maybe. A call for an uprising? Possibly calling for uprising. Cause the way you got your name set up sounds assertive. That shit sounds official. Like you bought that action. A call for an uprising. Nah, nigga, you need to lower that tone. You need to put that shit in all lowercase letters. You're a fucking Jack Russell Terrier out here dealing with bull mastiffs. A call for an uprising. Bitches, assemble. You want to assemble all the bitches to do what? Now, fuck y'all. And I don't even give a fuck. Just let me have this. <laughs> Just let me have this. Let me have this. A call for an uprising. I don't know that nigga personally, but that bitch got mad at me for talking about him. I don't even remember talking about him. I seen the clip when, when I said something about him in a previous live stream. Bruh, I just talk about people at random. That shit is organic. I don't have I don't come out here with a hit list of shit I'ma say. Somebody said more people call for uprisings with where I live in Northern Ireland with petrol bombs than guns, to be honest. I don't know what, what y'all got going on in Ireland. I'm gonna be honest. I have I have no idea. I don't know about none of um people down here are on something entirely different. So I don't know, y'all go out there with y'all petrol, but the fact that you said petrol, 
You said petrol. You didn't say gas. You said you could have said gas, but you said petrol. So I, by default, you're somebody I don't necessarily want to fuck with. Like, I'm going to let you have that. I'm talking about a call for an uprising. I'm not talking about you. Just calm down. Just have a seat. Somebody said it's petrol. Though. But we say gas down here. Why you couldn't just say gas? I know you're in Ireland. I've, I've, I've heard about the potato situation. But I don't know why you couldn't just say gas. Because you're in Ireland, right? Uh, you're used to saying petrol. Okay, this, this niggas down here say gas. It's throwing gas bombs. Well, we need to send a call for an uprising out there with y'all in. And... Y'all can have him then. Because <laughs> he ain't doing shit down here except assembling all the bitches to do a bunch of nothing. But, but, but say shit to me for saying shit about him. That's the most upright. Shout out to the person who, who got mad at me for saying something about a call for an uprising. Because that's the most uprising anybody has done that follows that nigga. Is come after me. It's like, how dare you fucking talk about a call for an uprising? He's done more. That, that shit. They, that one person did more for that whole movement than anything that nigga has ever done. Counterproductive. Counterproductive to an uprising to attack another truth, dude. I don't want your uprising though. And I don't think a call for an uprising is a truth, dude. You see? You see how we different? You see there's that? You see how I just did that? You see how I handled that with honesty and integrity and all that other good shit that makes people feel fluffy inside? I don't think that nigga's a truth, dude. I don't think he's a truth, dude. And I don't give a fuck about y'all uprising. Where the uprising at? Uprise against what? They go do this shit. Don't tell me go do it. How long niggas been uprising? Why hasn't shit got done yet? They go do this shit. Don't tell me go do this shit. So if you haven't, if people haven't done shit about this bullshit uprising they've been planning on doing for forever, then you can't get mad at me about how I feel about your uprising. It'd be something else entirely if people actually went out there and did shit and got shit cracking. People don't do that. All people do is call for an uprising and then accept donations to go do weird shit that has nothing to do with uprising. So you can't just sit there and be like, oh, how dare you feel like this about a call for an uprising or any uprising. Fuck all of y'all uprising. I don't give a fuck about neither one of y'all uprising about anything because y'all don't do shit. If you are on the internet talking about uprising, you're not fucking uprising. Flat out. These are just the facts, folks. So at that point, you then can't respond to me by saying, well, what are you doing? Because you're not doing shit. <laughs> I do, all I do is sit. And you can't come at me like I'm trying to uprise. I don't give a fuck. Like I told you I'm not your leader, your upriser, your pastor. I did write a book on how to successfully start and maintain a zombie apocalypse group. That should tell you what? That I am waiting for the fall. I am waiting for the collapse. That's when I shine. This shit here right now, I'm looking at you niggas act retarded. And, and take donations and lead the people astray and, and mislead people by giving them by, by giving them a perspective on the lies that mainstream media tells you and you calling it truth yeah I'm a zombie I'm an apocalypse person I'm an apocalypse leader I'll wait for this shit to fall and then spring into action but you call for an uprising niggas where the uprise at
Where they at though? He's a true dude. Somebody's like, he's a, don't call, I don't have a book, Nicholas Canada. Don't do that, Canada Nicholas. You know I don't have a fucking book. Just let me have this moment. Can I have this moment? You know what the fuck I mean. Oh, I'm not with that dude. I'm here on your show normally. Oh, shout out to you, Chris Investigate. Chris Investigates. Chris Investigates. I'm not. That's that nigga's name, by the way. I didn't just repeat myself. <laughs> that's really that nigga's name. Chris Investigates. Chris Investigates. Shout out to you. I'm just saying, though. Like, I know people in general want to ask their questions. Like, don't attack another truth, dude. Fuck him and his truth. Because that shit's not true. And he can't stand on what the fuck his whole thing is about because his theme is a call for an uprising and there has been no fucking uprising. Uprising against what? All they do is call for an uprising and then support cryptocurrency. And then they simultaneously talk about the digital dollar being the death of a country and then promote cryptocurrency. A digital dollar. Fuck y'all truth. If that's y'all truth, I'll shit on it. I don't have to be nice to you or anybody fucking else. I don't have to be nice to nobody's ideology. No fucking golden calf here. I don't, you know what? And I was looking at it or not. I was watching. I was out here splitting wood. I was out here splitting wood and Anomaly went live. And I was listening to Anomaly. And he was talking about family values. And it was at that moment, I was like, what the fuck am I doing? I was like, then do I really trust men that don't have wives? Like he got deep. I'm like, yo, you don't, you don't even understand commitment. Uh, like you're still a boy. And not for those of you, don't, anomalies older than me. Uh, you don't even understand commitment. I'm talking about him, but I'm just saying in general, there's something to apply generally. Like you people, y'all half of these men out here that talk about we need to do this or call for it upright. They don't even have wives. They don't understand commitment. They don't understand marriage or sacrifice on any level. And, and, and it's like they'll say all this good shit. So I said anomaly is 31. See, there you go. Try and pinpoint my fucking, uh, <laughs> There you, there you go, try to stop it, Jessica. She just stop. Stop trying to figure shit out. <laughs> I'm figure he older than me. But you wouldn't you wouldn't believe it based on how we act and live how different we are. That's what's up. Shout out to him. But I'm just saying, it's men that want to tell y'all to do certain shit and be like, oh rah rah this, rah rah that. They they have no woman, no kid. They don't have anything. They don't have anything. I'm like, you don't understand. Like, all they have is, is, all they have is financial gain and cars and, and sleeping in different hotels doing speaking engagements. I'm like, you don't have nothing. Bro, I was listening to a no bullshit. Shout out to Anomaly. I was listening to Anomaly and I looked in the background. I was like, oh, you don't even have a woman. Like, you don't, like, I'm a man. I'm not a boy. I, it, shit just started clicking. Shit just started clicking. At, at some point, I think people just want to have things to complain about because complaining about things does bring in income. It, 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 it makes money. Like people in California who complain about California and do nothing but ca call Californians libtards, but then make a lot of money and brag about their followers and their view counts and having billions of views and being bigger and oh, I got this many views, but then don't move out of California to make a better way for themselves or any offspring that they might have. I'm like, at that point, you just want to complain about California because that shit makes a lot of money. People like when people complain, people like adversity. As much as y'all say y'all hate it, as much as y'all talk about controlled opposition, y'all love it, y'all thrive off of it. That's what the deleted video was about. Controlled opposition is a must. Like controlled opposition is a must. 
Like you need it. And if, if that's people's bread and butter, they sit there and they count their money while eating buffalo wild wings and they can keep doing that shit because and then that that creates a culture of people who think this one person who they believe is speaking the truth is actually about the truth but they're actually not and instead of actually taking action these people that this person is leading aspire to be like this person and do some internet shit Granted, I like the internet, too. I'll be talking my shit on the internet. But I called everybody who just said somebody was like, you you tell us, you inspire us to go do stuff, but then you sit there and talk for five hours. I was like, you're a bitch. It's what did one person say? He said, you make five-hour live streams, but then tell us to go do something. I was like, nigga, if you listen to me for five hours, you're fucking retarded. And I know there's somebody out there that listens to me talk for five hours. You are, in fact, retarded. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pop with bluegrass in the woods. We can get a bus out there and ship you to Autism Acres. You need to get to work with the rest of the retarded people. But when I tell y'all I listen to Anomaly and all these other... Bro, I be working. Bro, I work jobs. I work manual labor jobs where I like... I want to listen to people talk shit. I love offensive people. I like, I like hearing that. I don't listen to the radio. So I got my headphones in and I'm, I'm busting rounds. So I'm... I'm I'm doing junk removal. I'm hauling shit. But I work. I work. So I got time for it. I got time for it. I drive a lot. So I got time for it. Nobody just sitting stationary like this middle school, just sitting there. Fuck no. What I have to say is not that fucking important. That's why you got some people that, that see, see me go live and then they like, oh shit, let me do something. They act like the manager just walked in. You have been on a job and the manager walk in, you pick up a broom and act like you're doing shit. That's what people do when they see me go live. They be like, man, every time you go live, I just pick up some shit and start doing some shit because I know you're going to call me a bitch if I'm not doing shit. It's like I just built a fucking shed because I, you was going to call me a bitch. I built it while listening to you talk shit for five hours. I got a fucking shed and nothing to put in it. Now nah, I need a lawn tractor. <laughs> you inspired me to get a lawn tractor. It has a loader on it, unlike yours, BG. That's what's up. That's what's up. So I got an email. Somebody built the shed while listening to me. For no reason. It was like, yo, I just want I write you to let you know. You inspired me to build a shed. I don't even know what I'm going to put in it, but I got a shed. I just needed to build something. That's Manning 101. Shout out to you. Somebody said not all work is outside work. Who said that, Rocco Rabbit? I understand you're uploading truth or videos, Rocco Rabbit. I don't fault you for that. You're you're clipping uh, salty cracker videos and you're uploading them on um, YouTube, Odyssey, Rumble, and Rockfin, and you call that work. I understand that. I'm not. I don't want that smoke with you at all. I have no problems with you. Um. Yeah, you can have that. I don't. You got it. You win. Somebody said I work in a card shop. A card shop? You mean a car shop? I don't know what a car shop is. Bro, people need. No, no bullshit. Not, not to sound high. My people. I wish I could listen to somebody like me while I'm banging out ball joints. Like you need somebody abrasive and in your face yelling at you while you're dealing with rusty fasteners. You know you got you you're doing that. Somebody's doing an engine swap right now, gonna listen to this live stream. Like, yes, yes, give me more. Fucking get your juices going. Like, yo, I gotta replace this shitty engine. This engine, I'm about to LS. Somebody's about to LS swap something. 
Somebody's about to LS swap something. They like, where the fuck BG go alive? Like <laughs> Go ahead and talk that shit. Sometimes I get on here all calm. I got a fire going. <laughs> I get you going. Somebody said bluegrass in the woods. I'm autism. Can I come work for you? You probably have Asperger's. Like they, they just did a mainstream article talking about how autism is an umbrella term. And there's the, and then they're talking about how to incorporate autistic people in the workforce. So we gave them that idea. They seen what we were doing over at Autism Acres, and they were like, "Yo, retarded people can work." And I'm like, "Yeah." And now everybody acts like, "Oh, this fucking, we need autistic people in the workforce," but they got that from me. Shout out to Bluegrass in the Woods. He, he oversees all autism acres for me. And they got that from us. Now everybody wants autistic people working for them. Like as long as there's no actual... I'm not going to say that. But they, they got it from us. We started it. When we started it, we got backlash. It's retarded people can't work. How dare you capitalize off retardation? And now all of a sudden, autistic people are taking your order at Burger King. At least we got our autistic people doing valuable shit like building infrastructure. They want retarded people to just go work at McDonald's. So shout out to us. Pat on our back. We started that. What else we got in here? Somebody said, I'm removing my rear end right now. You making me laugh and I'm I'm going to get smashed under here. But you under you under a pickup, you under something right now, fucking with that differential. Or you just removing it. You must have exploded the gears. Shout out to you. Go get it done. Somebody said not retarded. It's neurological. Maggie B retarded. I don't know what else to tell. You do realize like autism, they say now, like autism, retardation is an umbrella term. You don't have to be retarded to be retarded. You are retarded for not understanding what I'm saying. You see how that works? Maggie B, do you see how that works? You are retarded now. Now, are you sitting there drooling on your chest, shitting your pants? Do you have on huggies right now? Do you have a chin strap on, Maggie B? Do you have a helmet? <laughs> You're fucking retarded because you act like you don't understand what I'm saying. You are retarded. Bluegrass in the woods. Let's set up something, get a bus in out there to Maggie B, get her shipped to Autism Acres right fucking now. This bitch. Shout out to you, Maggie B. Shout out to Maggie B. I gotta go. If I can get my pen thing under control. Shit blinking like a bitch right now. <laughs>